Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to all of you who are worshiping with us, either in person or online. On this first Sunday after Christmas, we will ponder how Christ bore our image so that we might bear God's image in the world. If you are able, please join with me in this responsive call to worship. We who knelt in the stable, let our hearts give thanks and our hands rejoice. O oh, children, enter the house of the Lord. If you're able, please stand to sing our opening hymn, Angels We Have Heard on High. Christ is here. Let us confess our sins before the one who came to embrace us. Let us say in unison, God of grace and truth, in Jesus Christ, you have came upon us as light shining in darkness. We confess that we have not welcomed the light or trusted good news to be good. We have closed our eyes to glory in our midst, expecting little and hoping for less. Forgive our doubt and renew our hope so that we may receive the fullness of your grace. Let us live into the light of the world. Amen. 
The Son of God has come as light to free us from our doubts and lead us into assurance of God's love for us. Therefore, hear the good news and believe. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Please be seated. Clearly, I am not Henry this morning. <laughs> um, I am subbing in for Henry um, since he was at Christmas, clearly, and um, one of the family members tested positive. So he stayed out for our health and for his own. So we'll pray for him during prayers today, as well as the family member. We'd like to thank Matt for being our faithful musical servant this morning, and Tom and Terry for live streaming with us. Now let us proclaim what we need for the Lord this morning as we prepare our hearts and minds. Lord God, please open our minds and our hearts to the word that you have for us this morning. This Christmas, let your light and continue to shine in us all. Amen. Amen. Our scripture for this morning is from Colossians. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, Forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also may forgive. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and with gratitude in your hearts. Sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. We don't have any children in the sanctuary today, which is totally understandable. Um, and I'm glad that people are practicing caution. Just to be clear, Henry was exposed yesterday, so he's staying away out of abundant caution and to make sure that he tests negative before coming back. So I just wanted to make that very clear to you. Um, I remember coming to Fairfax Presbyterian Church when I was a moderator serving the presbytery in the early 2010, 2011 time. And during that year, we held our stated meetings in different churches. And Fairfax hosted one of those presbytery meetings. And so I had opportunities to visit many churches in this area and every time you go and visit a church, there's something unique about each church. And sometimes it's the stained glass window. Um, in New York Avenue Presbyterian Church, it's the Lincoln pew. It's, it's just various things. So when I came and visited Fairfax, 
You know what stood out to me the most? The octagon? No, the bears. This was the only church that I came and visited where there were bears lining each pew. At the end of each pew, there were bears. And I thought that was very curious, and I asked, what's up with the bears? And um, they said, oh, this is our bear ministry. And for those of you who do not know our bear ministry, let me read you what um, Megan's bear says. Um, this is actually in memory of Megan Lyons, who started the bear ministry. And she inspired, she learned from other church and inspired Fairfax to have this ministry as well. And all of the bears are now residing in the Narthex extension, and you're still welcome to take them if you like. But let me read you the tag. This special bear worshiped with us at Fairfax Presbyterian Church. It has heard our scriptures, prayers, songs, and sermons. Our congregation has loved it, and now it comes to you with our blessings. It brings prayers of love, peace, and joy to you today and always. 1 Corinthians 13, love bears all things. And I thought, what a great idea. What a great ministry. I never knew I'd be serving at this great church, but at the time I was just really impressed with the bear ministry. And today's passage tells us to bear one another. I mean, obviously, different kind of bear. However, it does remind us that we are to bear one another's burdens, we are to love one another, because that's what bearing and forgiving is in the context of Christian love. That we are to share our burdens, our prayers, and our friends at home who are worshiping with us, and even our adults here. This has been a difficult season. Even if you got lots of Christmas presents, which I'm sure you did, because you were all very good, and Santa brought you lots of gifts, and your parents also, maybe. Still, it's been a difficult year with this ongoing pandemic. But when we bear that burden with one another, that burden becomes lighter, and that is why Christ came to us, so that Christ can bear our burdens, our sins, so that we can be saved. So friends, whether you're home, here, or wherever you are, know that God is with us and God bears our image in Jesus Christ so that we may bear love for one another. Let us pray and the whole congregation join, please. Dear God, thank you for bearing with us. And thank you for sharing your love so that we can bear with one another. Help us to continue to celebrate what it means that you came to us. Deepen the meaning for us each day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now let us sing our middle hymn at this time.
It is hard to believe today is the last Sunday in 2021. While 2020 was a difficult year as we learned about this virus called Corona and its global effect, 2021 was different kind of difficult year as we learned to fight the virus and its variants and as we struggle to reclaim living into this new normal in the ongoing pandemic. As Pastor Henry said on Christmas Eve, this pandemic brought all kinds of disruptions to our lives, hasn't it? And we face those disruptions, adjusting our attitudes as needed. We slowed down in some areas, we changed our behaviors. We had to learn, sometimes forced to learn, new technologies, and definitely practice being patient and compassionate time and time again. Yet, as the pandemic is being stretched out, people's nerves are being frayed. Patience is running low, and so is compassion, it seems. While some disruption brought some unexpected good side effects, much of the pandemic disruptions has been really hard on all of us. Many people that I have spoken to, including myself, if I'm honest, are going to or doing their best to simply survive through yet another season in pandemic. One of my colleagues in the National Capital Presbytery stated that she was skipping the Mary in Christmas this year, and she was going for the heaven adequate Christmas. Personally, I chose not to skip the Mary in Merry Christmas, not because I was feeling it, but because I needed to feel it. Even if it was just saying it out loud, I wanted to feel the Merry in Merry Christmas. And having the in-person Christmas Eve worship service really helped me. It was so good to see so many of our members whom we have not seen for so long. So many um, people turned out that it kind of worried me at first <laughs> with the number of people in our sanctuary and also that we might run out of communion, which is a wonderful worry to have actually. It was good to sing Christmas carols with the choir and the brass band and sing Silent Night with candles and hear the crescendo of cymbals and timpani. I wish we could have that more often. There was healing in seeing smiles on your faces, hugging your necks, and marveling at how our children got so big. The joy that came to me at the end of the Christmas Eve service truly felt like a gift, a gift that I will remember and treasure for a long time. Whether your Christmas was merry or adequate or blue, my hope and prayer for you is that you will reflect upon the deep joy of this Christmas season, the kind of joy and gratitude that cannot be thwarted by anything, not even the threat and disruption of the ongoing pandemic. And if you really think about it, the first Christmas was also a mixed bag of anxiety, hope, pain, and joy in the midst of chaos. The songs of joyous celebration came along in spurts and it came much later. Mary and Joseph's journey towards welcoming this new life was anything but joyous in the beginning. During Mary and Joseph's engagement, Mary unexpectedly found herself pregnant when Joseph had nothing to do with this development. Although Mary accepted it 
as a sign of divine favor, and Joseph accepted it as God's plan, it was a risky situation, not a joyous situation that could have ended very badly. Then there was this mandated travel back to Bethlehem so taxes could be collected for the empire. From the town of Nazareth to Bethlehem would have taken about four days of arduous travel. But in Mary and Joseph's case, it would have taken much longer because Mary was expecting a child. She was in the last month of her pregnancy. I'm sure this road was extremely frightening for this couple. And of course, as we know, there was no room at the inn, only a stable, a barn, allowing some kind of privacy, but definitely not allowing the sanitary situation for birthing of a child. First pregnancy, no experience, no assistance, no assurance whatsoever that anything will go smoothly. There was no luxury of joy. Yet in the midst of indifferent or perhaps curious barn animals, the young couple scrambled to figure it out and delivered this divine miracle. Jesus, God child, safely enter into this world with water, sweat, blood and tears all mixed into the young couple's sigh of relief. Without the shepherds, nor the songs from the angelic choir, this family of two that became three brought joy, hope, love, and peace into the chaotic context that was anything but love-filled, joyous, hopeful, and peaceful. The singing and greeting came later. Joy came later. So if you were not feeling joy this Christmas, guess what? You're not alone. God understands. I understand. We all understand. Today's scripture, lesson from the letter to the Colossians, brings a timely reminder for all of us living through this uncertain time full of disruptions after disruptions. It reminds us who's struggling to claim the joy and merry of this Christmas to clothe ourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also most must forgive. And above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. The word bear in the original Greek means to endure something unpleasant or difficult. Bearing with one another implies a willingness to put up with differences and offenses caused by other siblings in Christ. In Greek, the action of the finite verb, clothe yourselves, is to be carried out as an expression of the two participles, bearing and forgiving. In simple words, clothing ourselves with love equals bearing and forgiving others. It is more than simply tolerating something because the passage calls us to take the next step of forgiving. Whatever grievances that you may have experienced or have with one another, we are reminded to bear one another and forgive one another because Christ came to forgive us. So if we say we believe in love, then bearing and forgiving is included in that love. 
This is certainly a difficult and unpleasant time for all of us. And to bear with one another through this time is a great reminder for us all who are struggling to keep our head above the water as we juggle work, caring for children, caring for the elderly, and caring for ourselves. Bearing with one another is the way we live out our faith that God's promises will be fulfilled and we will find peace through all the struggles we face. Yes, through the struggles, not around it, not above it, not below it, but through it. I'm sure that Mary was frustrated with Joseph for not having this trip planned out earlier so that the timing of delivery could have been avoided. Bear with one another. Breathe in and breathe out. I am sure Joseph was losing his mind when the innkeeper said, sorry, no vacancy, but maybe you could stay in the barn. Bear with one another. Breathe in and breathe out. I'm sure Mary and Joseph were scared to death as they faced what they faced with their labor and delivery. Bear with one another. Breathe in and breathe out. Squeeze the hand tight. Let out a cry. It's okay to scream. You can do this. You got this. Through the labor pain, through the struggle, comes joy. As we marvel once again at God's perfection, reflected in this day-old newborn baby, with his tiny fingers and toes, soft skin covered in peachy fuzz, the baby smell, right? Smelling so sweet, yet sounding so threatful when he cries. We learn from Mary and Joseph, who practiced compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience with each other to bring this child to light, to bring this child to us, to teach us that we too have been called to become bearers of love. In the midst of an uncertain situation, Christ's child came to us, wearing human flesh, wrapped in bands of cloth to help us wear God's garment of holiness, wrapped in bands of love. Into the chaos of life, Christ's child came to demonstrate how to live as God's holy and beloved in the world that dis desperately needs to see, feel, and touch God's love. We are God's holy and beloved, not by our own merits, not because we are so great, but because we bear God's image, because Jesus came to show us a different way than the way we seek, different way sought by human beings. We are called, all of us are created and called to clothe ourselves in compassion and kindness, humility, meekness, and patience to demonstrate Christ's purpose of incarnation to others. We are God's holy and beloved because we believe in Jesus' incarnation, because we believe Jesus' incarnation matters and that his teachings matter, his death and resurrection matter. It matters deeply as they connect to the life we have been called to live into. So to bear one another, to forgive one another, and to live in harmony in God's love, that is our calling, not just around Christmas season, but every day. We are called to live bearing his name in the world as Christians, as the ones who emulate and embody his teachings. 
Christ bore our image so that we might bear his image in the world. As I was sharing with the children in the conversation, I really enjoyed coming to Fairfax Presbyterian Church in 2011 as a moderator to um, moderate our Presbyterian meeting and seeing those bears and reading what was written on those tags, I really love that idea of bearing one another and having these stuffed animals to symbolize what it means for us to bear and how we can utilize these simple stuffed animals, cute little toys, to demonstrate that we are all bearing God's image and love to those who are in need. That these bear come with our prayers, our scriptures, our sermons, our songs to visit you, to comfort you where you are. Maybe you are at the end of your rope with all of this pandemic stress. I know I am. This is overwhelming, y'all. Maybe you have a hard time feeling the joy and peace and love and hope promised to us. I know I struggled with it. If you're one of those who is having a difficult time with all of this, please take a Megan Bear for yourself or for those that you know need it. They're sitting out in the narthex. They have not been, you know, <laughs> given away because of the pandemic, but they're safe, so you can take them. Imagine what scriptures, sermons, songs, and prayers that bear embodies and brings to the person who's receiving it. Because there is something about coming together in worship, isn't there? There's something about coming together in worship service that can restore your sense of purpose, can restore your spirit so that you can reclaim that you are indeed God's holy and beloved. I know I feel it and experience it every time I come to worship with you all. Believe it or not, there are some days I come to worship, worry that all the different parts of worship will not come together, stressed that my message will not be delivered well or received well, overwhelmed with work things that I have left undone waiting for me after service. Yet, when I come into this time, this space, watch our members and guests walk in through those doors and take their place in the pews and hymns are sung and liturgies are read in unison, the spirit stirs up. It stirs up joy, peace, and love, and hope. Burdens that felt so heavy on my shoulders feel bearable knowing that I do not bear them alone, but share with them. I get to share them with, with the spirit that leads. All that we endeavor as a community, friends, the mission to worship, to fellowship, to equip and to nurture, to build affordable housing, to address and educate about ills of our society, the mission to build relationship across various communities of faith, the mission to bring relief to the less fortunate, the mission to build our own community back up to continue the ministry of sharing peace and reconciliation in the world, they happen through us. They become real through our bearing of each other. They become incarnate through us as we bear one another, forgive one another, practice patience, practice peace, and practice worshiping, coming together in this place, virtually or in person. So friends, even if you're not feeling it this season, I want you to remember that God is with us. God is God, Emmanuel. God who came bearing our image to be with us, this God helps us to bear our community life together. We breathe in and we breathe out and we practice the discipline 
of hope and joy. It is a discipline. It is not what you feel like, but it is a discipline to practice hope and joy into being. We practice the discipline of love, find joy and peace when, even when they're not visibly present. And in that discipline of our life, we bring joy, we bring love, we bring peace. And they, these words become more than words, but become reality experienced among us. That is what you are called to be. Bear one another. Breathe in and breathe out. Amen. If you are able, please stand and join me in the affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, <coughs> suffered under Pontius Pilate, and was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, the third day he rose again from the dead. He descended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come and judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. If you are able, please join us in the online friendship pad so that we know that you are joining us this morning virtually, um, as well as in our sanctuary. We'd love to know who is worshiping with us today. Also, I will point your attention to our mini announcements in the bulletin. Please take a moment to look at those, but I will highlight a couple. Um, on the 2nd of January, we have our college student service at 9.30. We will also have our faith and football day as well, going down to see the Washington uh, football team play the Philadelphia Eagles. And then we'll have an undecorating time for our sanctuary and our space. So please, um, if you have helpful hands and you'd like to bear to take down some wreaths, uh, please come and, and help us do that um, as well. And then the men's breakfast will also be taking place as well on that first Saturday of the month in January. Second Sunday, thank you, of, of, of January. So please make sure that you, again, check our announcements. They are plentiful um, and join in any way you can in the life of Fairfax Presbyterian. Okay, let's see. We get some of our prayer announcements. From Eleanor, we have for Emma, seven months old, who spent the early hours of Christmas Eve and an ER with her parents, seeking relief from bronchitis. Girl. From Jan R. Let's see. Actually, hold on. Wrong one. Bear with me. <laughs> from Bill Staples. Uh, prayers for my son George and his entire family. Tracy, Ben, Evan, and Lily who were all diagnosed with corona last Thursday and are quarantined for two weeks, all had their vaccines and are suffering the equivalent of flu virus. Also from Mac M, request prayers for Serena as she undergoes cataract surgery this week. Also from Mac and Serena, joy for a beautiful Christmas. From Aaron S., Samantha McGovern passed away in her sleep after a long battle with brain cancer. She leaves behind her husband, Justin, and daughter, Josephine. Prayers for them as 
They keep going and doing and living in their physical presence. Prayers for peace. From Chris R., please continue to pray for my mom, Carol. Radiation will be needed after she heals from her surgery. Let me make sure there are, there are the general, oh yes, and prayers um, for the funeral of Barbara Agersberg that will be here at the church on the 30th of December, so next week. Let us bring all of these prayers spoken and unspoken together at this time. Let us pray. Let's see. Sorry. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Okay. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord God, for this second day in the Christmas season. For 12 days, we will have the opportunity to reflect on the gift of your son, Jesus, the one who offers us your grace and your truth, the one who shows us your face and who leads us in your way. Help us to slow down this week and not to rush on to celebration of the new year. Instead, may we pause and breathe and give thanks to you for coming into our lives as Jesus. Some of us have been given new clothes as Christmas presents, but none is as important as the clothing you ask us to wear. In this season and beyond, remind us to put on compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. The world needs these qualities now more than ever. As we move into the days to come, help us to bear with one another. And if another has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Since we are so thankful for the forgiveness offered to us by Jesus, we know that we must also forgive. And above all else, show us how to clothe ourselves with love which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Fill us with your spirit, Lord, so that we can be Christ's people in the world. Help us to share the peace and advance his will in all our words and deeds. In this time of ongoing pandemic and potential gridlock, we ask you to send your spirit on those who are in particular need, the ill, the grieving, the lonely, the anxious, the depressed and the hungry, the homeless, and all who are victims of natural disaster and human misconduct. May they feel your grace and your hope and your love. And may each of us be channels of your goodness in this world. All of this we lift to you in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our death and forgive us our debts. So you forgive those who debts and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the joy forever. Amen. This morning, let your joy and your compassion overflow in our offerings given. Don't just give out of your abundance. Give out of your sense of wanting the Mary back in Christmas.
in a manger to die on a tree.
Join me in our prayer of dedication. God, may these offerings be used in serving one another, in bearing one another's burdens, and in sharing in one another's joys. May they multiply to expand the kingdom of heaven here in Fairfax and beyond. Amen. Join us in our final hymn. Friends, breathe in and breathe out. And go into this world knowing that you do not go alone. You go bearing God's image to bring joy, peace, love, and harmony that the world desperately needs. God go with you. Amen. <laughs>